And Egypt, of course, another country that's in deep trouble at the moment. Now, Antony Blinken, of course, kicking off this Middle East visit to Egypt on Sunday. In your mind, what is he hoping to achieve? First of all, I think, uh, Hadley, it's uh, information gathering directly rather than through the ambassador or the chargé d'affaires at the moment, because there's an ambassador in Egypt. Uh, and also with the political noise between Palestinians and Israel, really clouding an effort to try to have some focus upon what's really uh, uh, Ukraine and Russia, because it does act to detract, distract attention away from um, very big issues. It's not to say that the Palestinian Israel issue isn't a big issue. It is and continues to be so, obviously. Uh, but it's, uh, I think, information gathering, discussions with key partners in Egypt, and a, good, a strong statement yesterday of support from America towards Egypt and its reforms and engagement economically. And I think that um, that's positive in terms of Egypt. They'll find out, he'll find, Lincoln will find out about Sudan and Libya. And in Israel, have engagement with the new members of the Netanyahu cabinet, who I have to say, I would like to see torn down the rhetoric. But it's, uh, again, I don't want to get, I don't want to get involved in terms of that issue, because as you know, it's quite inflammatory on either side. But trying to find ways with Israel to uh, bring some form of calm in Gaza and in the West Bank and in Israel itself. Absolutely. I, and I thought it was very interesting, to be honest, um, the conversations that I've had over the last several months. We heard even from the Saudis that they were essentially considering very clearly uh, the possibility of, of uranium enrichment, and that's all part of their, their mining and mineral strategy. And at the same point, that leads you right back to the question of whether or not it's an accepted um, uh, tenant that Iran's going to be able to reach uh, nuclear weapons grade uranium. I mean, they're already at 60 percent, probably even slightly higher than what we actually understand. The Israelis under Mr. Netanyahu can't be happy about that. The Americans can't be happy about that. But it seems as if um, neither the United States nor other governments really have any sway at this point with what Tehran decides to do. As you know, it's a rogue regime. Uh, I think that Lincoln will find as common support is, we already know, common support across the GCC uh, in the Gulf, Egypt, um, Jordan and, and Israel in terms of the position on, on, uh, on Iran. Uh, it's, the question is what is done about uh, the increasing, uh, I think, destabilization efforts of the Iranian regime across the region, whether that's in Iraq or Syria or Lebanon or Yemen. And I think that um, the drone attack was interesting, and I think it's a warning shot to the Iranians. But this is going to be a festering problem for a while, um, and who knows how long, in terms of the, that regime in Tehran versus the rest of the region, and now Tehran's support for Russia against the, in the attack on Ukraine. So all of it's concerning. Clearly, um, Antony Blinken will look for further support, possibly tangible support, but real direct negotiations as to perhaps a common response in time, which we may be discussing in a few weeks or a few months' time.